Hello everyone. Welcome to the Lake Superior Quality Innovation Network Learning Session 1, Webinar 2, Choosing a Performance Improvement Project. Lake Superior Quinn represents Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin under the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Quality Improvement Organization Program. I'm Donna Beebe, a Quality Improvement Coordinator at MPRO. There are three objectives for this webinar. After viewing, participants will be able to identify how to utilize Quality Assurance Performance Improvement QAPI resources to assist in choosing a performance improvement project, fondly known as a PIP, describe how to use the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative NNHQCC change package as a resource and foundation for quality initiatives and identify how to develop PIP teams with specific charters. Effective quality assurance and performance improvement is critical to our national goals for improving care for individuals and improve health for populations while at the same time reducing costs in our health care delivery system. We have the opportunity to accomplish these goals in each local nursing home with the aid of QAPI tools and the establishment of an effective QAPI foundation. Leading with purpose is the first strategy presented in the National Nursing Home Quality Care Collaborative Change Package. Focus on systems for change to proactively look for opportunities to improve those systems. Avoid errors and adverse events by asking staff, where are we at risk? Where are you the most concerned about making an error? Where have we had near misses? Where could we improve our systems or processes in order to prevent errors? This type thinking supports the expectation and importance of staff sharing information about potential problems and quality concerns. CMS has identified five strategic elements that are basic building blocks to effective QAPI. These provide a framework for QAPI development. PIPs are the fourth element. A performance improvement project is a concentrated effort on a particular problem in one area of the facility or facility-wide. It involves gathering information systematically to clarify issues or problems and intervening for improvements. The facility conducts PIPs to examine and improve care or services in areas that the facility identifies as needing attention. Areas that need attention will vary depending on the type of facility and the unique scope of services they provide. Where to start? All identified problems need attention, and usually from more than one person, but they do not all require a PIP. Priorities should be set and PIP teams established. Everyone should have an opportunity to participate in these activities. This is an interdisciplinary, interdepartmental approach. Support your staff in being effective PIP team members. Use tools that support effective teamwork. Leaders must convey the message that any and every caregiver or staff member is expected to raise quality concerns, that it is safe to do so, and that everyone is encouraged to think about systems. When a mistake or an unintentional error occurs, staff must feel safe to report the problem immediately. Don't automatically punish for errors or mistakes, but instead look for how to improve the system to prevent problems from occurring. Guide and empower staff to solve problems. For example, leaders should respond to problems that are raised not by immediately proposing a solution, but instead by asking the team to investigate and determine what they believe would work best. This will help to address root causes of problems and promote buy-in with the solutions. You should also consider what existing standards or guidelines are available. 
to provide direction as you work on your PIP. What measures can be used to monitor progress? Is the topic publicly reported on Nursing Home Compare? Is it a goal of the Advancing Excellence Campaign? There are many tools and resources available. As I mentioned, the NNHQCC Change Package, Advancing Excellence, Nursing Home Compare. Remember, measures should be tangible and achievable. Also consider what type of changes primarily will be involved. Will they be system changes, environmental changes, or staffing changes? What staff will be most affected by the initiative? And what training needs will this initiative present? Is there identified champion or champions for this initiative? Does each shift need an identified champion? When implementing a PIP, involve the people directly working in a process in order to improve that process. These are the people who really know what happens at any given point during the process. It's crucial to focus on organization-wide inclusion, not for the sake of inclusion, but to truly understand what's going on during and within a process. Residents' perspectives need to be considered also in setting QAPI priorities. Solicit residents' viewpoints, talk to the residents and families about quality as they experience it. Remember to communicate with residents and families. Ask them to tell you about their quality concerns. Focus on topics that are meaningful and address the needs of both the residents and the staff. Make sure all residents and families know that their views are sought, valued, and considered in facility decision-making and process improvements. Explain and discuss QAPI as a standing item in resident and family council meetings. Many facilities today are using some type of customer satisfaction survey. Results should be used to identify opportunities for improvement that will proactively have an impact on all residents and their families. The QAPI Prioritization Worksheet for Performance Improvement Projects is intended to help prioritize which projects you want to work on. As you are monitoring your data, it's likely that you'll continually find multiple opportunities for improvement. Since you can't work on everything at the same time, it's helpful to have something that will guide you as you decide which projects to work on first. This tool helps you objectively decide which opportunities are most important and therefore could be the topic of a PIP. The goal of this tool is to help you identify the issues or areas that are high risk, high volume, or problem prone as opposed to the opportunities based on intuition or just what someone on your team happens to feel should be a priority. Projects should represent the overall organization and resident population. So who uses this tool? This tool is completed by the team who's deciding which projects to start first. If you have a QAPI committee, it will likely be used by them is they are the team that reviews and monitors data and identifies opportunities for improvement. The QAPI committee usually includes individuals from multiple disciplines, which is essential because you want to choose projects that are important across your organization. This worksheet is completed on a regular basis when data is being reviewed. The frequency depends on how many projects are ongoing and how many improvement opportunities you're developing. You may want to revisit this tool at least every three months to determine which opportunities are coming up, which should be started, and how you want to roll out the projects. The prioritization worksheet for performance improvement projects will assist in choosing which potential areas for improvement are the highest priority based on the needs of the residents and the organization. 
Follow the systematic assessment process below to identify potential areas for PIPs. The process will consider such factors as high risk, high volume, or problem prone areas that affect health outcomes and quality of care. This tool can be completed and used by the QAPI team that determines which areas to select for PIPs. Begin by listing potential areas for improvement in the left-hand column, then score each area in the following columns based on a rating system of 1 to 5 as defined in each column. The main tip for this worksheet is it should be completed by a team preferably one that represents multiple disciplines within your organization. If only one person completes the tool, it doesn't have the same impact because you only have one person's opinion. Another tip is to not be overly concerned about the rating scale. The tool has a rating scale of one to five, with five meaning most relevant or important, and one being less relevant. As team members share their ratings, it gives you a chance to discuss why each person rated the opportunity as they did. For example, if one person rates an issue a 5 and another person rates it as a 1, that may be a great opportunity for a team to discuss and determine if this is a problem that's relevant to a small population. It may be a signal to the team that this represents a high-risk problem but doesn't impact a high volume of residents. Another tip is to be as specific as possible in how you describe your performance improvement opportunities in the left-hand column. If you describe opportunities too broadly, then it becomes difficult for the team to prioritize projects. For example, if you describe a topic as resident quality of life, it's hard to discern what that means. If you find you're having trouble prioritizing any topic, it's likely you've made the description too broad. If it's specific enough that it can be easily rated and prioritized, then it's also likely that if the topic is chosen as a PIP, it will be more successful. That's because the scope is narrow enough that the team working on the project will understand what they're being asked to do to complete the project. Here is an example of a PIP prioritization tool in progress. This chart illustrates potential data sources and project measures. This dashboard shows various areas of focus, specific measures, target goals, and actual goals. In the column titled Actual, you'll see the colors red and green. Red indicates a goal that has not yet been met. Green indicates the goal has been met or exceeded. This example shows graphed results of a nursing home's customer satisfaction survey. QAPI relies on teamwork. Task-oriented teams may be specifically formed to look into a particular problem, and their work may be limited and very focused. PIP teams are formed for longer-term work on an issue. PIP teams need to plan for sufficient communication, including face-to-face -face meetings, to get to know each other and plan the work. Generally, each team should be composed of interdisciplinary members. For example, a concern with medication administration should include nursing and pharmacy team members. However, even other disciplines or family members may bring a different perspective to understanding the issue and should be considered for this type of team. When chartering a PIP, careful consideration must be given to the purpose of the PIP and the type of members needed to achieve that purpose. Here are some examples. A PIP team with a goal of helping residents go outside more often decided that grounds personnel needed to be on that PIP team so that procedures for snow removal, sun protection, and outdoor seating could be considered. 
a PIP team working on reducing falls asked that the housekeeping department be involved as it considered root causes of falls and realized that equipment in the corridors and clutter in the bathrooms contributed. Why teams? No one works alone in healthcare. None of us are as smart individually as we are when we come together with others. Each team member becomes an owner of the change. Everyone learns, everyone teaches. Teamwork begins to break down walls and barriers between departments. Effective teams have clear purpose. Roles are defined for each team member and effective teams show commitment. What is a project charter? A project charter clearly establishes the goals, scope, timing, milestones, and team roles responsibilities for an improvement project, a PIP. The charter is typically developed by the QAPI team and then given to the team that will carry out the PIP so that the PIP team has a clear understanding of what they are being asked to do. The charter is a valuable document because it helps a team stay focused. The charter doesn't tell the team how to complete the work, rather it tells them what they are trying to accomplish. As you continue implementing QAPI, you and your team will prioritize opportunities for more intensive improvement work, select problems or issues that you consider important, um, specifically high risk, high frequency, or very problem prone, and consider which problems will be the focus for a PIP. Here are some additional tools that will help you with your PIPs. Use this checklist to ensure you have covered important steps in launching your performance improvement project. This tool is intended to be used by the person asked to lead the PIP or any project where a team has been formed. Use this checklist to make sure you have everything you need in place when you start a project. Ensuring you have these steps in place at the beginning can help you save time and confusion down the road. These resources will be helpful as your QAPI journey progresses. We will have an open call for questions and answers and assistance after nursing homes have reviewed both webinar one and two, both are recorded, and completed the post-webinar activities. The open call will be held on May 19th, 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Central Time, or 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. If you have questions or concerns before the open call on May 19th, here is the contact information for each of the three states um, that make up the Lake Superior Quality Innovation Network. Thank you for viewing this Performance Improvement Project webinar.